something about a good season finale. Hey loves, it's Avac when you're with another one. As you can tell, today we're discussing Atlanta season one, episode 10, The Jacket. There's something about a good season finale. To me, it feels like a September or New Year's where you're wrapping up something and you're looking forward to a new season with just the unknown. It's just so unexpected. Where are things gonna go? You have this hopefulness, but there's a bittersweet feeling of an ending. And that's what this season finale gave me. Let me not get too emotional, too nostalgic with it. From the top, this episode opens up with Ern waking up in somebody else's house. What's new? This time around, it seems like from the complaint of the person who owns the house, you my homie, but we not homies. This was cool, but it wasn't cool. He's on his riddler tip. Everything he's saying is a contradictory thing. And it looks like Ern is waking up from a migraine. It's almost noon, so he has no business being there still. They apparently trashed that guy's place to the point where they literally burnt his garbage. Ern is going down the steps and I said, this is a nice house. There's a girl chilling on the couch that's hungry. She wants to eat. She makes it known. But just before Ern leaves, he asks, where were we last night? That's when the guy said we were really doing the most at the strip club. So he heads there. But before he does, of course, Atlanta has to make it weird. He's walking down the street and people are dressed up. And I'm thinking, did this episode air around Halloween? Like, what's the deal? <laughs> then the random guy says, it's free fried chicken burger day. Next scene you see, Ern's obviously eating the free fried chicken burger because he's still on that tip. It's so good to see the glow up in season three because I was really worried about Ern from these episodes. So then he ends up going to the strip club. The bouncer's not letting him in unless he plays a $10 cover. Ern said, I just need to get my jacket. The bouncer looks. He's not in there. Ern says, come seriously. So he goes in for 30 seconds. We don't think he's actually looking. He comes out, he says it's not there. So Ern contemplates the same way I would, but I'm the type of person, if I'm looking for something the day after, I do the most. It's so bad, I hate to admit it, but anytime I ever misplace or lose something, the whole world gets turned upside down until I find it. I have stories on stories, but I'll leave it for Patreon. Ern eventually pays the $10, he goes in, and there he meets a bartender Oh, too eager to be in Paperboy's next music video. Ern's like, okay, whatever. I want to know if you've seen my coat or if there's anyone else who was working last night that saw my coat. And in typical Atlanta fashion, this scene was so unnecessary, but it was hilarious. They go back and forth about the dimensions to keep it, you know, YouTube classy of a possible bartender. <laughs> it sounds a lot like a grown version of Guess Who. Does she have this? Does she have that? Was her hair short blonde or long blonde? Was she like... It seems like they're getting close to the description of someone for the bartender to say, no, nobody here looks like that. What was that all for then? He starts to leave because his jack is not there. She says, hold up, I'm not playing. Give me your phone. I'm gonna be the next video vixen. You gotta admire her persistence, okay? So he's walking away feeling defeated and light bulb goes off. Let me check Snapchat. Oh, Snapchat. This was a throwback for me. Don't know about you, but I don't have that app anymore. I deleted it when they did that thing to Rihanna. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I couldn't rock with it. But this brought me back. It brought me all the way back to the days when I used to overshare on Snapchat. I mean, as a content creator on YouTube and a podcaster, but I don't really put my business out there like that. Back in the day when I didn't know better and Snapchat was a thing, I have to admit, I was just as reckless as Paperboy. So you see the Chronicles in the entire night and it is so hilarious. Paperboy's facial expressions, Darius is trying to be philosophical while being lit. Then you have Al making fun and saying, wait, what if we found out if Ja Rule was actually a dog? I fell out. I fell out because it reminded me of the most recent interview with Irv Gotti and Ja Rule and just that mess. But it's just so funny because they're going back and forth. They're just having a good time living their life. But none of that is should be on the internet. And nowadays, I feel like we know better and we do better. Back then, it was common fair. And heads over to that quintessential couch where Al and Darius are chilling and kicking it. This is when they start trying to be philosophical and on the outside I was trying to read into it because there's always more than what you get with Atlanta. But really, this was just commentary in the culture. Nothing that was said here we haven't broken down a million times before in past episode reviews. You know, I usually love what Darius says, but I couldn't with him with this one. First thing that got me was when he was saying, the biggest problem with black people is they don't know how to fun. Ern looks at him sideways. I don't think that's the biggest problem black people have. 
When you look underneath, though, you peel back the layer, he's, he's not wrong, but he's not right. When you're coming from a culture that you're just trying to get up and you've been oppressed for so long, fun is not your top priority. And it really intertwined with what Paperboy was saying. Well, we got to keep up appearances. Ern's saying, I don't think you should have put all of that on the internet. There is, I don't know if he's still drunk or too high, but he's trying to say something philosophical and is not coming out right. He's saying it's the appearances and it's all fake anyways. They got a fuel into it. And it kind of gives you the chicken or the egg conundrum where do you have to live the life for people to be attracted to the lifestyle for you to actually feel the lifestyle, fake it till you make it. There's a lot of talks these days about social media influencers faking it till they make it. And we've discussed this before. Which one is it? Do you have to live the lifestyle or does the lifestyle live you? I'll leave that for you down below to let me know. So it was funny when they were going back and forth about it. Cause I'm just like, guys, it's really not this serious. Ern asked Al for his phone. Al says, don't go through my pics. And you can see that Ern is calling the Uber driver in hopes of having this jacket. This is when I began to think, what's so important about this jacket? Was there money in there? Was there a note? Does he owe Van something? He really wants his jacket. And Ern is a drifter. He doesn't really seem tethered to anything, especially with the conversation they just had about capitalism. You wouldn't think he'd care this much about a coat. Moments like these is why I love the cinematography of Atlanta. Not only do Steven and Donald Glover do a good job of telling a storyline, they really layer it and put so much context. So even though we're technically closer to Al and Darius who are talking about the most random things, seeds, conspiracy theories, artificial food, you can barely hear them even though further off in the distance and maybe of more importance to us is Ern trying to figure out where his coat is. He gets off the phone and you can tell it's a win, but not really. He reveals to Darius and Al that it's gonna cost 50 bucks for the Uber driver to bring the coat back. This is way back in the day, because I know nowadays there's a policy where they can't charge you $50 to return something. Ever since this episode, Uber got straight with their policy and I hope this doesn't happen anymore. Anyway, it's time for the ask. Al is not having it. He's earned. I hate the sound. The sound of you asking. This is the family dynamic and it gets me every time. But Al does what he's supposed to do and he drives Ern to the Uber driver's house. Now they're sitting there like a steakhouse and it's taking way too long. Darius is really enjoying his goat curry in the back and I'm so jealous because I've been craving curry goat for so long. They're just talking about the coat and how it shouldn't take this long. And then Ern gets a call thinking that it's gonna be the driver. Turns out it's actually a promoter who wants to collaborate his rapper with Paperboy on a tour. So they're finally taking big steps in the right direction. Even though this is big news, Paperboy doesn't even seem to care. In fact, he's distracted and it's giving me the same tease as a couple episodes ago when he kept looking out the window. He's looking at the rear view mirror now. He's looking out the side. He's giving this feeling an aura to the scene of suspense and just unease. And you can't tell if he's just paranoid or he's extremely perceptive. Either way, he starts to roll off and that's when the SWAT team comes out. And this is a moment when I realized all the times that I first watched this season and I thought Paperboy was just on edge. Nah, it's just a lifestyle. Based on what he's seen and experienced, he always has to be on full alert no matter what he can't be caught slipping and that's why he was able to sense something wasn't right but what really got me was when they're trying to check them <laughs> asking them if they came for drugs and they said no my jacket next thing you know you see the uber driver running and he gets sprayed al said the same thing i'm sure every one of us was thinking when we watched this did they really need to shoot him up that much it speaks on politics and culture in a real dark humor kind of way. You chuckle, but you catch yourself at the same time. There's no other show that I've ever watched that does it for me. To make things worse, Ern goes over to the FBI agent. This is after the woman comes out of the house crying and they pronounce him dead. And this is big thing because it's insane. He starts, can you check his jacket? That's my jacket. Can you check the pockets? Everyone's looking at him like you're crazy. Are you serious? But they do check the pockets for him. They say there's nothing there. <laughs> this is just all types of comedic relief for such a serious scene. They say there's nothing there. So we're all like, what? All of that for this? Seriously? He doesn't want that jacket back after what happened in it. And then what really got me is 
Ern couldn't leave it alone. He says there's a secret pocket. Next scene is Ern defeated, head on top of Al's car. And Al says, sorry about your jacket, man. Darius is like, what we saw back there was wild. That is the perfect summary of what we saw back there, because that was wild. All of it, all parts of it. Things start to look up as Al hands Earn a wad of cash. Earn's looking at it like, what's this for? He said, you're 5%. I'm looking at like, Al probably thinks there was a couple dollars in that jacket that Earn really needed. At this point, I'm realizing it can't be the money because there's no way. There's no way Earn is that hard on cash to go on this wild goose hunt for a coat that got sprayed up and still wants the contents inside. But I thought it was a really nice gesture. It showed that as cousins, they're starting to respect and trust one another. And seeing where they started in episode one, it really wrapped up this character plot for season two really, really well. Knowing that Darius and Ern are friends because of what happened with the dog being trade off for the samurai and all of that. It's just a beautiful way to wrap it up as Al and Darius are walking away and saying, you wanna come and stay the night, extending themselves and having that kind of trust. And then Ern says, no, I'm gonna go buy Lottie and Van. And I was like, whoop, okay. This is interesting. So he goes by her and the next scene is so beautiful, but it's very bittersweet. You see Ern doing what he's supposed to do, preparing a meal, having a conversation with Van. And for me watching this, it was sweet, but it felt empty. I don't know what to say. It just felt like it was too quick for it to mean anything. It felt like he was trying to right his wrongs the same way you'd wrap up a season. But at the same time, it felt like I don't know, I can't really put my finger on it. What really got my heartstrings going was when they were chilling on the couch. Cause I'm like, this is what you guys could be if you worked on one another. You could tell Van really wanted that. He hands her the wad of cash minus a couple of dollars that he'd stuffed in his shoe before. She says, what's this? And it's a token, he's paying her back. It seems like he's trying to right his wrongs in a way and it's beautiful. There's an awkward moment where she makes a joke about him being a drug dealer now and he doesn't respond and she trips and then they laugh about it and it shows that once upon a time they were good and maybe they could get there if they both efforted, but who knows, maybe we'll find out in season four. While they're laughing on the door and it turns out it's Justin who kept Ern's keys. Down on the couch, Van asks, you know, you guys had a wild night? And this was after she said, you know, you're a good father. So both of these really, it was very unsettling for me. On one level, we can see that Ern wants to be acknowledged for trying to be a good dad, but there's also something missing there. And I think by Van saying you're a good dad, it's a longing for him to be more than that, to be something to her as well as we get to know in season two during the Helen episode. It also really got me because she's still kind of curious and tethered into his life when he's obviously trying to keep it separate from her. Them kind of relationships are difficult. You would think the episode ended there, and for a couple seconds I did, especially when Ern leaves, to my surprise, and Van's like, are you sure? And you can see the hesitation. He's like, no, I gotta go. She's waiting at the door. It felt like Ern didn't want to lead Van on. For the first time, he's not trying to live off of his cousin or Van, but then I started thinking, he's going to some next chick's house? Like, what's the next stage? He starts walking through the streets of Atlanta, keys in tow, opens up a storage unit and it all floods back to me that that's where he's spending the night. And I love this end of the season as he's finally taking accountability for his actions. We meet Ern and his parents won't even let him in his house because they say it costs them too much. He's always leaning and mooching off of people. So for once, He's trying to do things on his own and get on his two feet as he's taking off his shoes and looking at the money. It's such a beautiful symbol of trying to grow as hard as it might be. The little steps that you take that can go a long way in your personal development. And I might be getting too much in my feels for this, but I use this moment reflecting back on how I've grown as well and people I've known in the past that have grown with me. And there's just such a beauty of giving yourself the grace to make mistakes, to fumble along the way, to see wild shit and to become better because of it and to also take a chance on yourself. And I really think that this series in its entirety really tethers on getting to know yourself but also be true to yourself. And whether it's the crazy antics or the supernatural stuff mixed in between, I think when you really distill it down, Atlanta is a show about the culture, about what makes us who we are, and about really tethering and finding yourself. 
And I never really would have thought of that until I watch this episode and this season again with you. So I want to thank you guys. It's been helping me on my personal growth journey. And you would never think that from a show like this. But that's what it's been doing for me. You can let me know down below what it's been doing for you. Hands down, this was it for season one. And there's a lot of good episodes this season. It's probably top five, four or five of all episodes throughout the three seasons for me because it was that good and it tied up a lot of ends while allowing for new beginnings and really spoke to life itself. So that's what my thoughts were. I can't wait to start reviewing season four with you guys. I'm super excited, but also very sad that this will be it. When it's done, it's done and that's it. Atlanta is so good at having supernatural, wild-ish, but still keeping it realistic so you can relate it to your life if you want it. If you just want to watch it for the comedy or the weirdness, you can do that too. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review. And until next time, stay safe, stay sane, stay blessed. Love and later.